Welcome to Real Asia. Let's talk about High Score Girl. Originally based on a manga by the same name, this anime series explores the life and times of young boy Haruo Yaguchi as he grows up around video games. It's a complicated web of love triangles and drama coated with a veneer of video game references and product placement. In some ways, I find the tying of the show's world to ours via video games to be a refreshing and immersing aspect. In other ways, I feel like this show would be better off without the overemphasis on video games completely. Now I know that would alter the entire premise, but I've always found references to video games to be cringy. I had to deal with scorn and admonishment from my peers due to my growing, healthy gaming addiction. They were just jealous that I had something I enjoyed and was passionate about. And yet now, video games are enjoyed by hundreds of millions of people. It's almost as though the pain I experienced growing up has been rendered entirely worthless. I have to live with the end result that my love of video games had on my upbringing, in a world where video games are now the norm. If I had been born even as few as five years later, I wouldn't have suffered the way I did growing up. This makes High Score Girl an extremely challenging show to watch, because it's like seeing my life played out in motion. It was hard for me to get into High Score Girl at first. I mean, I found it incredibly easy to relate and connect with the main character Haruo Yaguchi. I can relate to his failed relationships, I can relate to his obsession with video games, I can relate to his failed education due to spending his free time playing video games. I may have grown up during a slightly later time period than Haruo, but I too have experienced his life. Failing to see what I had until it was taken away, High Score Girl is by its very nature a depressing show for someone like me. The entire experience is spent rooting for Haruo, hoping that he won't make the same mistakes I have over and over again. And yet, much alike my experiences, he grew up oblivious to the feelings of others. Much alike I, every attempt he makes to better himself is met with failure. Like I, he too struggles to find his place in a world that simply makes no sense to him. It's like Rensuke Oshikiri managed to write a manga based loosely on the events of my own life. Let's dig into our characters then. So our lead is Haruo Yaguchi, he's a clueless dolt obsessed with video games with no decent future prospects. As I've said, an incredibly painful character to watch because he's a mirror into my own life. He has a borderline unhealthy obsession with video games, which makes him 100% relatable to anybody who grew up with the same interests. He's voiced in the English dub by Johnny Young Bosch, whose previous roles include Ichigo from Bleach, Lelouch from Code Geass, and Nate Adams from Yokai Watch. Excellent talent, brilliant range. This guy is clearly the type of player who doesn't like to lose. And I can't lose to someone like that. I have an honor to uphold. Go! I now release you from your many years of regret! <laughs> One day at the arcade, playing some Street Fighter 2, Haruo discovers Zangief player Akira Ono, a fellow classmate. This attractive young girl isn't very talkative, choosing to communicate via expressions. She serves as Haruo's rival at first, then eventual love interest. She's a difficult character to read, which adds to her mysterious aura and strange charm. She makes short work of Haruo on Street Fighter 2, and a rivalry friendship blooms between the two. Ono is the daughter of powerful rich parents and suffers strict upbringing at home. She has to slip out to the arcades to relieve her stress. What few lines of dialogue and noises she makes, they're voiced in English by Christine Marie Cabanos, whose roles include Asuza Nakano in K-On, Nep Gear in the Hyperdimension Neptunia games, and Hisone Amakasu in Dragon Pilot. <laughs> Why do you get so violent when they're scared? <laughs> Nothing beats young love. Haruo makes friends with a cute girl named Koharu Hidaka. She's not very talkative at first, but by experiencing Haruo's passion for video games, she discovers that she has fallen truly, madly, deeply in love with him. 
This forms a rivalry between her and Akira, creating this messy spaghetti of a love triangle. She's voiced in English by Erika Halaka, whose previous roles include Anne Takamaki in Persona 5, Kyoko Kirigiri in the Danganronpa series, and Hayley Ann Thomas in Yokai Watch. It's like a date. Huh? What'd you say? <gasps> no, no, no! It's nothing! A lot of the magic of High School Girl is watching these three main characters interact, each scene being another gut wrenching, emotional roller coaster. You want Haruo, Akira, and Kaharu to each succeed in life and love, but it's tough because that sort of compromise just isn't possible. It's almost like every episode has to end with a sob storm inducing emotional development. This show becomes increasingly difficult to put down as time goes on, especially when later episodes bleed into the chilling ending theme, Hokago Distraction, tugging on the heartstrings even worse. Netflix really knocked it out of the park with the dub on this one. Is what I would say if I didn't have one minor complaint. Okay, it's something really small, but it took me completely out of the show the entire time. I'm talking about American names. Netflix opted for the American names of consoles and games in the dub and subtitles. For a story set in Japan that refers to the currency as yen, features characters with Japanese names and accurate Japanese gaming culture during that time period, why oh why did Netflix think using American names for games and consoles was a good idea? To be honest, it's probably due to licensing and the companies involved, but still, in the second episode, there's a good two minutes in the beginning dedicated to a conversation about the Super Nintendo and TurboGrafx-16, two consoles from the early 90s. Nothing out of the ordinary for Japanese school kids to be talking about, except that the Japanese counterparts for these consoles would be the Super Famicom and PC Engine, respectively. I'm sure a good majority of high school girls audience will know the Japanese names for these systems, so why not keep it authentic? especially considering physical and internal differences between US and JP consoles. Referring to a Super Famicom as a Super Nintendo is factually inaccurate and immersion breaking. TurboGrafx-16. Huh? TurboGrafx-16? <gasps> Super Nintendo. TurboGrafx-16. Super Nintendo. TurboGrafx-16. TurboGrafx-16. <laughs> PC Engine Super CD-ROM. It also carries over to the games. For example, the Kung Fu is referred to as China Warrior. That would work if every game across the board had an English release, but it sounds absolutely weird to hear characters refer to games by Japanese names when no English name exists. Can't believe that it's Daiun Dokai. This game is famous. Fatal Fury Special, Samurai Showdown, Puyo Puyo, Space Area. Daiun Dokai. Puyo Puyo. Tokimeki Memorial. Sayugoma Roku. Again, I'm sure they could have just kept all names Japanese across the board. I think folks would catch on fast that Vampire Savior is what they know as Darkstalkers, or that Street Fighter Zero is Street Fighter Alpha to them. There are 12 episodes in the first season, and three OVA episodes aired in March 2019. All 15 episodes, or rounds as they're referred to, appear under one season on Netflix, which makes for easier binging. Season 2 is due to start in Japan by the end of the year, Netflix will probably have the episodes dubbed fairly quickly as they're well aware they've picked out a top quality show this time. Witnessing life through the game-centered mind of Yaguchi is a painful experience, blind to love and the feelings of others. An extremely painful, relatable premise married with heart-rending drama and a bitter ending. I cautiously recommend this show, and I wait for the second season with an uneasy apprehension. This has been Real Asia. Make sure to chop that like button, ring the bell, and check back here for more reviews of Asian television, cinema, and animation. Until next time, sayonara. Puyo Puyo 